This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. Carl Gerber, which is still my problem. I bet you're all wondering who my guest is tonight and what they're going to say. And you know what? So am I. I have absolutely no idea. We've got Miss Tanita Gravita the first. I, I saw you, Tanita Gravita the first, swishing around into your guest seat, and I certainly feel your pain, notwithstanding the fact I'm a man and I have not the slightest clue what it feels like to be pregnant. Is there anything you'd like to say? I've been pregnant forever. Luckily, everything comes to an end. Take, for instance, this very show. By 8 o'clock tonight, it will be all over until next Sunday at 7 p.m. Are you making jokes about my biological clock? Gee, someone's a little sensitive. Mr. Gerber, you'd be a wee bit sensitive, too, if you'd been pregnant in the belly as long as me. I'm glad to hear you aren't carrying your fetus somewhere other than your belly. Rest assured, I've tried more pregnancy discrimination lawsuits than anything else. I've also done my share of binding arbitrations for pregnant women. And I'm about to do one on November 6th. I'm your advocate in these situations. Mr. Gerber, I guarantee nobody has gone through my particular pregnancy situation. Well, I'll have to see about that. I've handled quite a few varieties of workplace pregnancy abuse. 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 I've suffered abuse for years. Can we start with whether there was a job termination? Oh, yeah. There was one of those. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Chica, chica. Totally. Let's get into some righteous representation for the pregnant woman now. I'm there. I'm so ready. Throw the book at the organic ostrich. Hmm. Um, uh, I thought um, uh, the health department um, closed them down. That's just what they told the people they wanted to get rid of. I wasn't one of those dog weirdos that brought my dog to work and let the fixer fix up fights for the beasts in the mixer rooms and the rumbles they call races in the hallway. Well, you know, the only gambling I do is taking these employment cases on a contingency, wondering if I'll ever get paid. The employer is collectible and the client's sane enough to withstand the trial. I don't even get in the office pools, but a lotsman is friend to all animals and anyone staging dog fights at organic food company should go into the batter. You said it, Mr. Gerber. How was the work environment at Organic Ostrich? They were terrible. Never in my work career, which was mostly at Organic Ostrich, did I ever imagine a so-called holistic company would be a red destroyer of women's rights. I found a lot of these newfangled, allegedly politically correct internet companies and companies run by people who don't like paper expect their employees to behave in a mechanized manner, and then they're all coy like they, they understand the meaning of holistic when, when, when they're calling out for their, their lawless and flexibility. Tell me about it. I can picture a guy in his 30s, the typical 30s hairdo parted on the side, dyed black with an overgrown beard from the Mountain Man Mayhem flick, Elvira screen in the early 80s. And he says, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, gag me with a spoon. No, 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 not not literally. Uh, two, two weeks ago on, on this show, I was, I was pricked with a pin that the last pricked a man with MRSA and, and, and last week a 200-pound pit bull almost mauled my groin. And this week, you're trying to shove a gigantic mixing spoon down my throat. Where did you get that supersized spoon anyways? Mr. Gerber, I worked at a food manufacturing company. Yeah, but the spoon is huge and you produced it out of nowhere. Thanks for being considerate, but I can hide an Uzi underneath my maternity clothes. <laughs> Please don't tell me you did. I don't think I have an Uzi under there. Once you put the spoon away, and maybe we can get on with the show. It doesn't fit back in. I need to readjust. Uh, the clock is ticking. Maybe you can figure that out on our next break. Do I look premenopausal to you? Do I look a day over 35? Huh? Huh? 
First of all, I couldn't identify a premenopausal woman if I wanted to. And second, I'm the only one supposed to say, ha, ha. I thought it'd be funny to do a Carl Gerber workplace lawyer imitation. <sighs> I've been listening to all the old episodes of this show on WorkplaceLawyer.org, a little YouTube, the KABC site. I like to mix it up a little bit because I don't want my internet browser to think that I'm playing favorites. I don't like favorites. Uh, got any more? <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't pull anything out of that blouse. Like I meant like Carl Gerber workplace lawyer imitations. Call one 525 700 if you were fired from your job, sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed lots of wages. I mean, lots of unpaid wages. Yeah, yeah. That's one 525 700 Carl Gerber, Carl Gerber's a real lawyer, and he can be reached at one eight seven seven five two five zero seven zero zero. Oh, that was cool. Can can I can I imitate you? Oh God, you're making my lore <laughs> abdominal tear. I'm sort of off topic, but as a joke I used to say, I, I I was Carl Anthony Gerber the first. I used to go around telling people. We have so much in common, Mr. Gerber. Do you always go by Tanita Gravita the first? Ever since I've been pregnant. That's interesting, because I can get by in Latin, you know, between Spanish and all, and all the Latin I studied. I believe your name has special significance, but I won't tell the listeners what that means just yet. Can we not get into that? I mean, not here on the radio? Uh, moving right along, what was the reason for your termination? <sighs> I'm not terminating my pregnancy. No matter how big my belly is and how much pain I'm going through, I will never terminate my pregnancy, even if it takes 100 years. Luckily, your pregnancy won't take 100 years. I was referring to your termination of employment. Um, how was your termination of employment justified by your employer? The omnificent, that jerks that I'd been pregnant long enough. Business had to move on. Well, that's terrible. Employers have to accommodate a woman's pregnancy. By the way, um, how many employees with organic ostrich at the time? I'd say one employee for every month I've been pregnant multiply, multiplied by my weight gain during pregnancy. Uh, could, could you just simplify the equation for me? Why? I thought you delighted in conundrums, puzzles, challenging legal scenarios. If you are my guest on this show, and this is my show, and Cindy D was once a guest on this show, and she has a vague, familiar connection to Star Bright, what does that make you? Uh, a guest on this show. <laughs> Precisely! Wow, I got it right on the first try. Anyway, was there any urgency in having to fire you? And uh, what was your job anyways? Objection. Compound without <laughs> waving said objection. I'd been pregnant forever, so there was no urgency in firing me. Answer to part two of that question, I was head of supervising. Ha ha, super sizing. <laughs> I copied you again on that objection. Compound. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was funny, but not that funny. What what might be funnier is like, what's supersizing? Giant soy drumsticks. Like, have you ever been to a county fair and seen a giant drumstick turkey, yeah. but like way bigger, a soy drumstick the size of a drum? A drum of what? Oil. No, no one would eat a soy drum <laughs> stick the size of a 55-gallon drum of oil. Maybe not, but someday they will. Were you ultimately in charge of supersizing, or was that just a fancy title? Nah, I injected the product. Made it grow. Grow really big. Is that possible? Biogenic soy engineering baby. Are you a scientist? No, I'm a Lutheran. Did you have subordinates? Ordinate at 34.1663 degrees north to second ordinate 33.7701 degrees north. Sub at ordinate 34.0856 degrees north. No, can go to the second ordinate. We self-destruct at 0720. Um, I said subordinate, not the ordinate between the Channel Islands Marina and Oxnard and Long Breach and your submarine at Point Magoo. Sorry, I can barely think at this advanced stage of my pregnancy. Actually, it's been advanced a long time. I met submarine at 33.8121 degrees north 
11 7.9190 point west. Degrees west, the magical kingdom. Seriously, Tinita Gravita the first. The summer read right at Disneyland left in 1994. Finding Nemo submarine voyage, I wet my pants waiting in line for that ride. Oh, that opened in 2007. I guess you're even younger than I thought. Mr. Gerber, that happened last week. Okay, so you're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, a real workplace lawyer, and I hope you do call me off air at 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700 for a real case if you've been fired, sexually harassed, or owed wages. That's 877-525-0700. You're listening to... Talk Radio 790 KBC and we come back we'll find out why this woman wet her pants. With a smile like hers and a tempo since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a consistent force in fighting for the rights of California employees. They've represented thousands of employees in cases in which they've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed wages individually or as a group such as a class action. The Employment Lawyers Group has maintained a high win rate and a serious record before the California courts. Please call 877 525 0700 for an experienced work lawyer. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, research the firm at worklawyerca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. If you hire the Employment Lawyers Group, your legal problem becomes theirs to solve. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-390-9528. That's 800-390-9528. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. The help you need could be one call away. 800-390-9528. Make the free call now. 800-390-9528. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com forward slash terms for more information. Indeed knows it's hard to find qualified candidates when you're hiring. It's like finding a unicorn. But when you post your job on Indeed, it's easy to find people with the skills you need. Nurse practitioner, four plus years experience, acute care certification. Indeed has a huge pool of amazing candidates and screener tools that help you find your most qualified applicants. Whoa, an entire short list of unicorns. See why more than 3 million companies worldwide use Indeed to hire. Post your job at Indeed.com slash hire. Indeed, the world's number one job site. Source com score total visit. This here is the story of Lawrence, who always wanted to play pro football. His parents supported his love of the game, sent him to special camps, and then in college, pro scouts came to a bunch of games where Lawrence was playing the trumpet at halftime. Yeah, Lawrence was never that good at football, gave up by the time he got to college. But he also learned how Geico could save him a lot of money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. So, this here story has a happy ending after all. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit beefy, or even with type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Affordable term life insurance is out there. Call term provider and speak with with Big Lou at 800-481-1458, 800-481-1458, or visit BigLou.com. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds, too. All right, Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, and I'm medium-sized, but my guest here is in charge of supersizing at Organic Ostrich, and she's been pregnant a very long time. So, you know, once I won a pregnancy case... <laughs> Or they had these clothespins, and you had to get the clothespin to use the bathroom. My client was on the same clothespin rotation with the other 150 women in the call center. Guess what? 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 She wet her panties. She took them off and threw them at the evil management team who <laughs> implemented that discriminatory practice. Huh? Do tell. My client rarely made the clothespin rotation on her shift. Go Gerber. Get those awful employers. Teach them a lesson or two. Do you know what it would be like if I talked with a clothespin over my nose? Now you do! Before you were told you were fired, was there any particular mistreatment you suffered at Organic Ostrich due to your pregnancy? 
uh, failure to accommodate my pregnancy-related medical conditions, harassment on the basis of my pregnancy. Should I go on? Well, those are actionable violations based upon pregnancy. Let's start with the harassment on the basis of your pregnancy. Okay, how do I explain this? After about six or seven months, I got really big. As big as you are now? No, bigger. I don't exactly follow. Just pay attention. I got big. Not like the omnificent said, big though. I'm sure you realize I had a standing desk in the middle of the soy mutant mixing area. Uh, that's terrible that they, they, they made you stand on your feet when you were pregnant. I didn't care about that. I requested a standing desk when I first started. Winston Churchill defeated the Third Reich from his standing desk. To stand while desking is power. My standing desk was incised inside a little three-wall enclosure. Lots men call them pony walls. The back was open, deep about two chairs pulled out like people are playing office chair battle ram while making out. I've handled more than 1,750 separate employment cases, and I've never heard of office chair battle ram. Where have you been? My reference was to office chair battle ram while making out. It's an entirely different experience. Oh, I get it now. Good. Anyway, the omnificent said that I had gotten too big to fit in my three-walled standing desk quarters suitable for playing office chair battle ramp while making out, you know, if the need arose. I think making out at work is very inappropriate, likely to lead to a job termination or write-up, even if it's consensual. It's not consensual if you lose the game. Um, could somebody get injured playing office chair battle ram with or without the makeout component? Of course. This is a dangerous, unprofessional horseplay <laughs> in violation of any employee manual outside the Remshelms cosplay ostrich ranch. This sounds very immature. A pregnant woman should not be playing office chair battle ram. Imagine the damage it could do to your fetus. I will not lose that game. I'm not sure what that means in terms of what happens to the winner. I'm talking about the game of life. I will not lose the game of life. I could care less about office chair battle ram and making out while playing office chair battle ram. I was just giving you a spatial example so that you would be familiar with it. All right. The average office chair is two feet deep. If you're battle ramming, you might be close. You might be a few steps away uh, for running leverage. Maybe you want to spin the chair. If there's making out, this could be a little closer quarters. I I'm feeling like there was a comfortable six feet in back of your standing desk of six feet of width. My work area was six foot seven wide by seven foot three and a quarter inches deep in the back of my 36 inch deep desk. Precise. Should I do a metric conversion for your foreign born listeners and scientists? Total depth of, I don't know, Remus Helms things divided by uh, eight, maybe uh, less. Uh, the omniscient thought you were too large to fit in your work area of more than 65 square feet. Yeah. I was big. My tummy was the size of Texas filled with tofurkey and mayonnaise. Ugh, ugh, the thought of tofurkey covered in mayonnaise. Uh, I don't know. I, it was going to make me queasy the rest of this episode. Honey, the thought and smell of just about everything made me bar for six months when I had morning sickness. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I thought morning sickness generally occurs during the early stages of pregnancy. My early stages have lasted long enough to birth an elephant. Gosh, you know, that sounds like a pregnancy from hell. I presume this is your first. My first, my last, my answer to all my dreams, my everything. Maybe after you get over all the aches and pains of this particular pregnancy, you'll, you'll see how wonderful it is to be a mother and you'll go on to a second or third and maybe an eighth. Do you have an eighth? I could sure use an eighth right about now. I hardly think you should be using substances when you're so far along in your tumultuous pregnancy that has brought you ungodly grief in your groin. Maybe if you ate on a ball, I mean birthing ball or on the eight ball and, and tried to relax, you'd feel better. Are you trying to say something about an eighth ball? Do you have one? I bet somebody does at this radio station. 
Don't they have a stash here for their guests? Uh, other than my show and maybe Sid's show before me and the psychologist afterwards. You know, this is a conservative talk radio station. You think you think right-wingers come in here and snort cocaine off the table? Tanita, what are you doing? Get, 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 get your head above the table. There's, there's nothing there. This is a drug-free zone. The guru, the, the doctor, a substance abuse doctor, Drew does his show in the studio. Do you mind if I use the trash can? If you want to do a drum circle, I, I, I can see what I, I can do, but I, I dropped out of tri keyboard pipe organ classes when I was in junior high. I'm not a drummer. I want to, Rolf. Uh, you're having one of those issues so late in your pregnancy? The nausea never subsided, and you have to go mention tofurky and mayonnaise, and I'm thinking about Remus Helms. What straight woman or gay man wouldn't think of Remus Helms? The man has made billions off his genital. Do you know how this pregnancy has impacted my life? I have had to put all sexual thoughts out of my mind. For 10 years now, I've had to curtail any sexual activity or I might miss scary. Oh, such drama. But then again, I, I shouldn't talk. I'll never know how it feels to go through pregnancy. I, I did, however, have a major outpatient surgery in 1996 and a, a major in-office surgery in 2015. What constitutes a major outpatient surgery? I uh, can't really get into that right now. You know, time limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we, we established you on this and claimed you were too big to fit in your work area, which is absurd. Pregnant women aren't that large. And yes, I had a case against a famous restaurant in the 90s where the founder claimed my pregnant client was too big to fit in the cashier booth. And I steal material from from actual cases for this show. And yes, the real world is as absurd as this show. The Omnificent said I shouldn't be barfing in the soy versus almond milk mixing area. It would <sighs> cause germs. Um, how far were you from the mixing area? Let me put it like this. If I stuck my head out and leaned over my standing desk, I could puke right into the soy versus almond milk mixing area. Um, did you? <laughs> Just once as a joke. Uh, was there a product in there? In my barf? No, I just dry heat. Oh, did, did anyone see you do that? The sanitizer lady, um, I lost the game of office chair, chair battle ram to, to her. I don't think I want to buy anything from Organic Ostrich. Well, they're only selling on the black market now anyways. Um, That's kind of weird. There is no black market for pseudo-vegan products that contain 90% fever. How did you know there's 90% feather fiber in their soy drums? Yeah, that's easy. Meet your God Dogma was on here last week. Do you know where that broad lives? I've been trying to have her served for months. Served? Did you sue her? Her bulls attacked me, and that's why my tummy isn't what it used to be. <sighs> mean bull ate part of my baby. Uh, this did not happen. Want to see the lawsuit? Uh, sure, I can probably make sense of the situation. Did you sue her in small claims court? And my case will be dismissed any day now if I can't get her served. Presumably using a process server who can subserve at some point. Check this out. Read this. All right. This is a service report. Due to the comments from the process server, I, I think the process server has been out to Michigan Dogma's townhouse, but won't get near that particular unit. Why? Well, the report states process server is afraid of corpses after sundown. And during the day, Mean Bull has chased him away, torn his sweatpants, and damaged his leg tattoo thrice. Corpses? I knew those animals would kill somebody someday. Uh, no, no, no. Michi Gadogma lives in one of those townhouses with a front door that looks onto the gangly graves at the Hillside Memorial Park and Mortuary. Where else could that woman keep her four-legged children? I'm wondering if there are going to be ways of housing discrimination lawsuits on the basis the apartments, well, they won't take people like dog lovers. You mean some kind of mutants? No, no. Dogs with clothes, owners pushing them, and baby carriages. I don't know if that day will ever come that I have to pram to push through the quiet tree-lined streets of Compton. Now, there's something to aspire to, <laughs> to get you through the physical tumult of your difficult pregnancy. Do you like dogs? Sweet Bull was annoying, but I kind of liked her. 
Maybe I should find another lawyer. Are you discriminating against Lotsman, who is friend to all animals? How can you be friends with Mean Paul? He made me lose part of my baby. I'm going to ignore that last comment. Back to legal matter at foot. If Vegan Ostrich was shut down by the health department and lost many of its employees, is this a collectible defendant if you win? They're insured. They have to be with all those rambunctious dog racings around. Employment practice liability insurance, you know, that's different than general premise liability insurance for a business. I happen to know they have a $500 deductible for their premise liability policy because most of their vendors have been attacked by beasts in the plant. This so-called healthy lifestyle food manufacturing plant sounds very unsavory. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, which is definitely my problem, and it's going to be my problem if I got a call from you tomorrow about a new case that I'm hoping to get at 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700 for a real workplace law firm. That's 877-525-0700 if you been fired from your job, sexually harassed, owed wages, or you've been mauled by a dog at work. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer, call 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, read more about the firm at EmployeeLawCA.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Make your work problem theirs to solve. KABC News, I'm Ken Jeffries with this news update. Police in Pomona say a 10-year-old boy has been wounded in a drive-by shooting. It appears to be gang-related. The shooting happened just before 3 p.m. at Cornelia Street. Police getting multiple 911 calls today about the shooting, but found the victim at a hospital suffering from a gunshot wound to the shoulder. And a 21-year-old man who'd been sought in connection with an alleged sexual assault at an off-campus fraternity party near UCLA is now in custody. After surrendering to campus police over the weekend, Nima Benavud is now being held in lieu of $100,000 bail. KABC SoCal weather, clear through tomorrow with overnight lows in the 50s and daytime highs in the 70s and the 80s. Right now in Santa Ana, it's 68. Van Nuys at 77. In downtown LA, it's 71 degrees. I'm Ken Jeffries, KABC News. I don't know how much clearer I can make this, but there is only one name to trust if you want a face or neck lift without surgery, Dr. Rispler. I go there and I put my name on it because I've seen the results Dr. Rispler and the team at LDI have gotten for me, so I know that they can do the same for you. I wouldn't trust anyone else with my face, plain and simple. Tighter skin around your face, neck, even those lines around your mouth or eyes, LDI is the place. Now, tightening your skin is one thing, but that's just the beginning of what LDI can do for you. How about removing those red and brown spots and blotchy skin or the sun damage from all that California sun. Oh, and all those unsightly broken blood vessels, LDI can help. The combination of technology at LDI is not available anywhere else in the U.S. And if you or your child is struggling with acne or old acne scars, just call LDI and book your 100% free consultation. Call 800-606-6000, 800-606-6000. That's 800-606-6000 or book online at GetLDI.com. The Online Trading Academy is a leader in investing education and they can help you generate income for today or your retirement. You can learn how to create a daily, weekly, or monthly income using the Online Trading Academy's patented supply and demand strategy. All you have to do is give them a call at 888-991-TRADE. That's 888-991-TRADE to get two free passes to their three-hour class so you can check everything out for yourself. You can also visit them online at otaclass.com. That's otaclass.com. 
Wanna be a dancer, wanna be an Talk astronaut. Talk radio sub 90 KBC. I am Carl Gerber, a real workplace lawyer, licensed in four lawyer, states, doing two pregnancy trials in a 30-day period right about now. <clears throat> and I've got this Tanita Gravita the first in here who's got some problems. She's been pregnant a long time. So Tanita, let's get back to whatever happened you at Organic Ostrich. There were dogs, a miniature horse, what? rabbits who multiplied and got loose, an iguana. Were all these animals being brought into work for a long time? The reptiles, more recently, the rest, as long as my pregnancy. I guess things went downhill pretty quickly. No, it's been a good three years. Uh, it still sounds like a sinking company, but I... I don't know. If they have EPLI insurance, it might be collectible if you get a judgment against them. Can we talk about the failures to accommodate my condition? We should. The first six months, they were okay with me needing to use the bathroom every 15 or 20 minutes. After about six months, the omnificent told me to knock it off. That's pretty cruel. A pregnant woman can't just knock it off if she has to use the bathroom. I've, I've heard the fetus weighs down on the bladder. Not long into my pregnancy, maybe five months, one of my doctors decided I could not myself take gallon samples of soy mutant mixed with celery. The fixer had to lift it for me. Lifting restrictions notwithstanding the fixer, are, they're common in pregnancy discrimination cases. Employers can usually find a way to accommodate them, even for a CNA. Eventually, the Omnificent devised a pulley system for me. I just had to <laughs> press a button and the gallon of mutant mutated. I'm not really following this, the mutation thing, but it sounds like you were granted a combination and your coworkers were even helpful. I was. A chair. I, I thought you had a standing desk. I mean, sometimes you brought a chair into your workspace to play office chair battle ram with or without make out. Heavens no. I had to lay off all office chair games, doctor's <laughs> orders. By my seventh month, maybe it was later, I had to have my chair moved for me. How was that done? Oh, no biggie. The fixer pulled a couple of strings. This is the same guy who did the Hully Hully races in the hallway? Yeah, but he did other things too. It wasn't like all he did was take bets on the races. I, I hope you never bet on those races. That's the thing. It got hard for me to walk into the hallway and watch. Were you accommodated? Being that the dog racers were such an important part of the workplace camadre, of course they had to accommodate me. How in the world were you accommodated? I rode the English Mastiff. Oh, on a regular basis? Pretty much daily. I don't mean to offend you or anything, but if you were as big as you say, and now I'd say your stomach is quite large, but not the rest of you, was... Is that appropriate to be riding the English Mastiff? I, I know those weigh about 250 pounds, but uh, couldn't you injure him? Are you taking sides? Do you even begin to understand how my back felt? Couldn't they maybe get a little cart you could be pulled in so you could make it in the hallway and watch the dog races and know the results were as stated by the fixer or or he was he was lying to you because uh, you couldn't see the race results? Yes. They could have gotten a little cart for me. The Omnificent refused. He said that that was an unreasonable accommodation. The sanitizer woman had a miniature horse. There's no reason why her pony couldn't pull me in a child's wagon. Yeah, I don't think miniature horses should be pulling carts carrying pregnant women. That's animal cruelty. Are you calling a pregnant woman an animal? We all have our biological issues. I was rather referring to the fact that a miniature horse should be left to eat hay and oats or not workhorses. I beg to differ. My roommate used to work at Novell Vogue Novelty Toys. You've oh, heard man. about their Lilliputian warehouse for a time. Instead of forklifts, they use miniature horses carts around their products How to cart their products. How much did their products weigh? They were virtual. How about the cart? Was that real? Of course. Fisher Price made it. 
I'm starting to get some weird vibes here. So am I. I'm feeling like you're a guest truly worthy of your appearance on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. You dry heave into a giant mixing vat for various vegan products. You have connections to the Lilliputian warehouse that has since gone virtual, and you're on strings to fixer poles. I don't answer to no fixer. He only pulls my strings. I mean, the strings to my chair. (laughs) Although some of these accommodations are more than a little odd. It sounds like your employer was willing to accommodate you. Not the cart. I don't really feel attending the dog races was a primary duty for a supersizer. It is. Do you want to see my doctor's note? As a matter of fact, I do. Um, this is this note here. It's, it's dated a long time ago. I, I don't really get this. I guess the doctor got the year wrong. No, he's a psychiatrist. I, I feel like I've seen his name somewhere before. I think you have. He was, a, he was the in-house psychiatrist that concluded there was nothing wrong with that guest you had who claimed that there was a worldwide conspiracy against him because he looked like the typical gay man. <laughs> That's right! And, and that guy complained about Ryan Sabretooth trying to flirt with him and as seen on Color TV, which in turn got Lisa Glickman sued, which is, hey, this guy is a really bad psychiatrist who also conducts workplace investigations and, and he gives doctor's notes to you about pregnancy. I don't know. I found him on Groupon. That was long before he went to work for that other company. Um, These are notes from a medical doctor, though, and they they do require bathroom breaks every 15 to 20 minutes, and it suggests that the company needs to find a way to get you in as a spectator to the dog races because you're having trouble walking. The Omnificent said he heard walking was good if you're pregnant. That's what one of my client's doctors advised her in her pregnancy. If everybody but... Michelle Dogma attends the races. It would be unlawful discrimination to prevent me from spectating, betting on the accounts of my pregnancy. Uh, the claim you could no longer fit in your work or it was mean. It, it might show discriminatory animus towards the fact you were pregnant, but saying, saying you had been pregnant long enough and business had to move on, that's direct evidence of discrimination on the basis of pregnancy. We don't need circumstantial evidence and we don't have to even focus on animus. I had been pregnant for a long time. Oh, that, that doesn't matter. Every woman's pregnant for, you know, nine plus months. The employer can't limit accommodations to until they get sick of having to accommodate the employee. My pregnancy was longer than nine months. The law doesn't just cover the period of time you're pregnant. You're protected after you have your baby for pregnancy-related medical conditions like postpartum, healing after maybe a C-section that prevents you from driving to work or driving a bus. That's a good point. I plan to drive the bus. Um, How is that work-related? What bus? The bus. The bus. The magic bus. Where exactly does this bus go? All over the place. What does this have to do with your job? Somebody has to drive the organic ostrich bus. Uh, You're a food scientist, I thought. I figured I was too big to fit in my Prius. By the way, those postcards you're passing around town advertising this show have a picture of my white Prius on the front. I didn't give you permission. We we use a public domain image. There are a lot of white Priuses around. Were were you going to... uh drive the bus to work the ostrich bus yes but it was hard to get into i i I would think boarding a large bus would be hard given all of your pregnancy related restrictions have you seen the legs on the ostrich bus how high off the ground is it are you familiar with monster trucks i'm a super senior lotsman besides being able to build anything out of nothing on a lot of lotsman's capable farmer and i'm ordained practice law in texas you enter a monster truck from its wheels no duh how am i supposed to do that in my condition presumably a lift or an ostrich there is a lot of foolishness here you know dry heaving the chair thing and all but it seems like your employer just got tired of accommodating you and they fired you due to your pregnancy i think you've got a case how long do they have to accommodate somebody for pregnancy like i said until the pregnancy related conditions go away presuming that doesn't require more than four months off work if the company has less than 50 employees in a 75 mile radius if a company is a uh, big and the employee was there at least 1250 hours in the last year they might also get federal fmla they can stack on top of their pregnancy for a total of seven months off 
Organic Ostrich sure had more than 50 employees before the health department came. It's not like you even took off a long time for your pregnancy, right? I did take some time off. The doctor prescribed complete bed rest for a week while my stomach went down so dramatically. Um, hopefully they did an ultrasound and made sure everything was okay. They couldn't do that. That's so weird. The employer maybe had to accommodate me for more than seven months. I only took a, off a maximum of two months in a year's time for the pregnancy. Well, two, two months in a year's time is certainly within your right to the pregnant woman. That was the first year, though. Yeah, if you took FMLA more than a year before you were fired, the, the amount of time you can't uh, take, it doesn't, it's reset for FMLA. They definitely have to accommodate somebody who is pregnant for at least seven or nine months while they're at work. What about after nine months? I feel like we're kind of repeating things. You know, they, they have to accommodate the pregnancy-related medical conditions during the pregnancy. And if the pregnancy takes the employer out of work... Yeah, you know, I've got to be allowed a minimum of four months off and, you know, seven months, uh, yeah, for FMLA. And what if somebody's pregnant for more than nine months? Well, that's something we're going to have to come back to after our break on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, actually giving real legal advice about pregnancy. That's not the fake part of the show. I can be reached about a pregnancy discrimination case or a job termination at the office at 877-525-0700. Once again, 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. To have a serious conversation about a real workplace problem, you are listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. The Employment Lawyers Group is a results-driven law firm whose goal is to get the right result for the client. They have represented employees with a high rate of success since 1993 throughout the state of California. They're only paid and if they are able to collect money from the employer so there's not any upfront fees or costs in order to hire them. They have represented thousands of employees who've been terminated from their jobs, sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or are owed wages in an individualized or group basis such as a class action. Call 877-525- That's 877-525-0700. They have operators standing by. They can also be reached at employeelawca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Hire them and make your workplace problem theirs to solve. This is Behind the Mic with Brad Dalius. Hey, it's Brad Dalius, host of Behind the Mic, and we're wrapping up your day with your favorite L.A. sports teams, the latest buzz in national sports, and more weeknights at 11 on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Chef Jamie Gwen here. This Sunday, Damaris Phillips of Food Network fame stops by and Evan Marks of the Ecology Center shares eco-education. I'm live on Sunday at 12 noon right here on Talk Radio 790 KAVC. Are you in good hands with your insurance company? Are they a good neighbor? This weekend on Champions of Justice, Tom Girardi talks with an attorney who takes on insurance companies when they refuse to pay their policyholders. He's legendary lawyer Wiley Aitken. You will be amazed at the stories he tells about policyholders who have been denied payments after years of paying their premiums. Tune in Champions of Justice Saturday morning at 11 and Sunday night at 10 here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Looking to save money on Medicare Part D? Well, Walgreens is a preferred network pharmacy for many plans, including United Healthcare, which means lower co-pays for you. Together, Walgreens and United Healthcare make saving on Medicare Part D quick and easy. So bring your prescriptions to your nearest Walgreens pharmacy and start saving today. Walgreens, trusted since 1901. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now, 800-390-9528. That's 800-390-9528. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. The help you need could be one call away. 800-390-9528. Make the free call now. 800-390-9528. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com forward slash turns for more information. 
Wanna be a dancer? Wanna Talk be a radio, dancer? 790 KBC. I'm Carl Gerber, and you're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. And because I have a career, I was able to go out last night with the wife I don't usually kiss. And we went to WeHo, and we're hanging out at that um, a really cool hotel there. And there was like these guys, and one guy had. He had a red shirt and black pants, and the other guy had the other way around. I guess he had red pants and a black shirt, and I'm like, you know, I think if you guys were to switch shirts and pants, that would be really cool because if, you know, you're, one of you is just wearing black and I was just wearing red, I'd feel a lot better. And like, were you crazy? And this went on for a while, and I, I gave him a lot of money. Gave him 200 bucks, and then they went in the bathroom, and the guy comes out, and one's wearing all black, the other's wearing all red, and they're like, you know, why did you want us to do this? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the kind of you know, thing we do around here. So anyways, we've got this guest here, and she's got some problems with her pregnancy, and it's been going on a long time, and there's been accommodations at the company, and um, some of them are a little bit weird. She's wanted to spectate the, the racing, and she, she had to get out to see the horse races in the hallway. And... Yeah, you know, I don't know, Tanita Gravita. There, there's some pregnancies that go on for you know almost ten months, and in those situations, if there are problems, the employer still has to accommodate the pregnancy. What about ten years? I'm not following you. My pregnancy wasn't ten years anyway. I was just thinking. Yeah, employers have to accommodate multiple pregnancies at different times over a ten year period. For each pregnancy, four months off has to be given. I only had one pregnancy. Yes, I recall you said you would be one and done. My pregnancy was a lot longer than nine months. How much longer? Was it does does this make my butt look big with Lisa Glitman about her when she was pregnant and then afterwards? Yeah, that, that's true. But what does that have to do with your case? If Lisa Glickman was a fictional character in a book you wrote, how could you have Misha D- G- Dogma served on her jury? Yeah, this is a fictional world, the Carl Gerber workplace lawyer. I feel you're getting a little off track. When did you write that book? Huh, many years ago. I probably wrote most of it in 2006, but I, I think I finished it in 2007. That's around the time I got pregnant. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that pregnancy didn't work out. I, I understand why it's important for you to get through this pregnancy you have now and have all these special accommodations. It's been a long time, such a long time. It's hard to get over the loss of a child. I didn't lose a child. I'm still trying to have my child. I am still on my first pregnancy. Uh, Today is October 21st, 2018. Are we both on the same calendar? Yes. Yes. Something is uh, not making sense here. I've been pregnant since 2007. Um... That's a long time to be pregnant. I'm not harboring a human. You know, it's close to Halloween and we're getting all these horror movies out these time of the year. But this is not the Halloween show. That's going to be next week. I tell you, I'm not having a normal baby. If you've been pregnant with the same baby for 11 years, I'd say this is anything but a normal pregnancy. I played office chair wars with a skinlet. (laughs) You don't make out at the end of office chair wars. It isn't office chair battle ram. We've been kind of through this before on the show. Not the whole office chair wars versus office chair battle ram. Uh, skinlets are not real. There's no such thing as a skinlet who lives below the ground. You tell that to my uterus. I don't speak that particular (coughs) language. I've been carrying this baby for 11 years. Um, How much longer do you think you're going to carry the baby? Until I'm good and ready to stop being accommodated. (laughs) This now is sounding fraudulent. You said it, not me. I have another question here. Since skinlets are not that big, um, why is your stomach so big? Do you want to see? 
I'll show you. I, I, I really don't think that's appropriate. To, what the fentanyl? I've, I've, I've never seen anything like that. Did, did, you, did, you, did you really even work at Organic Ostrich? My salary was 92000 a year plus profit sharing. This was a 130k a year job. You think I'm a joke? Yeah, you, you can't be pregnant with the same pregnancy 11 years and what, whatever that is on your stomach, connect it with... Velcro. Velcro. <laughs> Whoa, I, 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 by the way, is your name really Gravitas? It is now. Yeah, uh, Gravitas means it's your first pregnancy. My first, my last. My everything. I've got another angle on this case. If you have a mental disability where you're convinced you've been pregnant with a skin lip for 11 years, you know, I guess that's mental disability that your employer has to accommodate. Thank you. Is that just... mm, (laughs) Is that more of what we should be looking at? I just want to drive the bus. Do you have any, like, performance evaluations? Did this whole, I think I'm pregnant for 11 years thing interfere with your job? Um, other than the dry heaves, the ropes, um, the English Mastiff, let me think. What else was there? Well, the bathroom issue. Read this. I can't wait. <laughs> Yeah, this is interesting. It it says your organs are pressing down on your bladder as if you're pregnant. I am. Hey, look, has an ultrasound been done or not? You know, maybe there's like a tumor or another medical condition that might be needing some attention here. They won't let me do an ultrasound. Why? The hospital, they won't approve the ultrasound. Um... Have any tests been conducted to confirm this pregnancy? My health plan won't refer me to a specialist. Um, Have you undergone any mental examinations? My HMO doesn't cover that. How do you feel about the Affordable Health Care Act? What? Yeah, the Affordable Health Care Act. I've never heard of that. I think you need proper medical care. Maybe when I'm Medicare eligible, I can get more medical info on my pregnancy. (laughs) This is this is weird. You've been listening to Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber. I really am a real workplace lawyer, and we've covered pregnancy, which is really actually a topic that unfortunately leads to a lot of lawsuits. I don't think employers quite get it that the FMLA is separate from the laws that pertain to pregnancy. Pregnant women are allowed time off for being pregnant, and it doesn't have to go for the FMLA and the laws are different and a lot of employers just get it wrong. A lot of employers ask for medical documentation they're not entitled to and there are combinations that have to be made. All the things we've talked about tonight are actually real issues with pregnancy other than it taking 11 years because generally someone isn't pregnant for 11 years they might feel that way but it does come to an end and it's a time in which employers should be helpful and understanding and they shouldn't be um, challenging doctor's notes. A certain number of these pregnancy discrimination lawsuits relate to challenges to doctor's notes and claims that they're not understood, claims that they can't accommodate them. And I've, I've actually have won the case for the CNA who had a 10-pound lifting restriction. And it was determined that there was plenty of work they could have given her. And you can't just say, you know, we can't have any CNAs who are pregnant because a lot of women are CNAs and a lot of them are childbearing age. And that would reject and throw out a lot of people from employment. Besides the I don't understand the note case, a lot of these pregnancy cases evolve um, some type of leave of absence at some point, And a lot of times the employee is simply not reinstated. The 
the employer does have to reinstate the employee when they come back from their pregnancy leave and they need to to do that to a comparable position and if you have pregnancy case or you have any type of employment case where if someone's been fired they're owed a lot of wages sexual harassment I would like to hear about it off air at 877-525-0700 once again 877-525-0700 for our real workplace law firm the employment lawyers group that's 877-525-0700 I believe that next week we're going to have a Halloween episode and it may involve a bit of Los Angeles history and I have a feeling it's also going to involve Hanita Orchid Helms and you may remember she died of boredom at work. You can go back to workplacelawyer.org to review that episode. I think it's episode 18. You also hopefully are live streaming on this or hearing it directly on the radio, but you can also go to YouTube if you type in the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show or Carl Gerber KBC to listen to old episodes. And this show is heard every week at this time, 7 to 8 o'clock on talk radio, 790 KBC. And we come up with different scenarios. We script it every week to keep it entertaining, keep the jokes flowing, to cover real workplace scenarios without having to put pregnant women through the horrors of having to talk about their cases and their trials and to, to make it much more entertaining to you and to give you some examples which are a little bit fanciful so that you remember them. Even if someone is pregnant for nine or ten months, they've got to be accommodated. So thank you for listening, and I hope that you're listening again next Sunday. This is Carl Gerber of the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group.